Um, but the guppy, how the guppy chooses to breed. A female guppy does the choosing, they're kind of liberated kind of species. And the first rule is, if a male guppy, if of two male guppies, one is 40% bigger than the other, she sleeps with the bigger one. Well, sleeps being a sort of, you know, the, the human <laughs> phrase. Um, uh, okay, that's a simple rule. Doesn't, doesn't take into account any other variables, that's it. Size, of course, is a very good indicator of genetic fitness. You've survived for a long time, you're obviously doing okay at getting food. I think size should be a much bigger genetic fitness indicator in men, personally. <laughs> but um, it's actually a pretty good indicator of status, survival, and other genetic values. Without, without the female guppy wanting to do a full DNA profile on the other guppies, which would be time-consuming and, you know, without opposable thumbs would be difficult, um, this is a really, really clever thing to do. If one male guppy is not 40% bigger or more than the other, it moves on to the second variable. Like the people of Essex, it goes on orangeness of pigmentation. <laughs> um, and if one guppy is more orange than the other, it goes with the more orange one. Intelligent. Now, you could say that orangeness is fakeable, but it's probably, as with Darwinian signalling, it's an attribute that is costly or difficult to fake. That if you're a guppy not quite in the best of health, it's very difficult to be really orange. Third one, if they're equally orange, because they've both been spray tanned and vajazzled at the local... Um, <laughs> um, the third one is actually social proof. If she's seen one of the male guppies sleeping with another of her female friends, but not the other one, she goes with the first one. Which is on the basis of the heuristic, well, if it's good enough for her. Um, <laughs> fortunately, I don't think humans... Well, do humans adopt that? I wonder. Um,